Hi there, welcome back. My name's Colin. I'm one of the drama tutors here at East Kilbride Art Centre um, for South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture. Normally you would find me in my Saturday morning drama classes, but uh, unfortunately the way things are at the moment, I've jumped onto camera on our screen to bring you this six week block of an introduction to drama. We're on episode three today. Um, we're getting to the fun stuff today. Previously we've been talking about what is drama, um, where do you do it, what's it for, and we've been getting ourselves warmed up, ready at the start of the class to jump in and do some drama. But today, what we're going to talk about is um, dramatic performances, okay? So we're going to talk about the stage, we're going to talk about things to remember when you're on stage, and important things to follow when you're giving a performance. All right? So, theatres, dramatic performances, where did they all come from? Well, quick overview, think really, really far back, okay, as to um, the 6th century. Now, the 6th century is a BC, before Christ, okay? So think back to the 6th century, the ancient Greeks, of all people, were um, selling out audiences in massive stone coliseums, giving performances to folk, okay? They were the first people to bring drama and performance to the masses, okay? And since then, we've moved on a bit, okay? Um, if you ever go to Greece on holiday, you'll see all the ancient Parthenons and Colosseums. Um, Italy have got some as well. But we've moved on a lot now, so we go to the theatre quite a lot. We go to see shows, we go to see concerts. We've moved on. So, think about what I want you to do. Grab a piece of paper, okay? Grab a piece of paper and a pen. And I want you to think about um, things you might see in the theatre, okay? Think about when you go to see a show, alright? Um, hopefully you've been to see a pantomime, perhaps with your school or with the family. Or you might have been to see a play, you might have seen a school show, you might have seen something, okay? So what I want you to think about is, you go to see a performance, what types of things are around you? What do you see, okay? List 10 things, okay? And, um, do that now, pause the video, come back in a wee second and I'll run through some of the most popular ones and see if you got it right, okay? So pause. Okay, we're back. And so, have you got your list? Okay, 10 things that you see in the theatre when you go. Okay, so the first one I've got on my list is seats. You go to the theatre, you sit down. One of the first things you do is when you go in is someone will show you to your seat. Okay, so I've got seats. Uh, what else have I got? Next, I've got lights. Okay, always at the start of the show, usually the lights go down. You sit in darkness, lights come up, show begins. If you look up in the theatre or around the stage, you will always see big lighting rigs. Okay, we've got ones in here, um, massive lights. So they're an important thing that you see when you go to the theatre. Next one you've got is stage. All right, so actors are usually on the stage. Um, what else have I got in the theatre theatre? I mentioned them before. So you have ushers and staff. Okay, so the people that show you to your seats are ushers. The people that help you when you're in the theatre are staff. All right, so you see them. Depending on what show you go to see, um, there might be music. If you go to see a pantomime, there's usually singing. Uh, if you go to see a musical theatre, you will usually have singing and dancing. So you might see musicians. You might see a band, okay? Usually down the front. Um, you'll see the orchestra, or they may be in a pit at the front, slightly under the stage, um, where you don't see them, but you hear the noise. Uh, what else do you see when you go to the theatre? Obviously, you see performers, all right? It can be actors, actresses, okay? Uh, what else do you see when you go to the theatre? On my list, I've got sets, okay? So, usually if you go to see a show, there will be a set, which is the background, all right? So that shows you where the scenes are, okay? Where it's supposed to be. You also have props, okay? So that's things that people are using as props, holding, uh, moving about with. You see curtains, okay? Uh, if you go to a traditional theatre that's got a proper stage, you'll have a set of curtains that open and close at the start, the middle and the end of the show. Um, but also, similar to here, you might have curtains at the back, okay? Your, a lot of the old school assembly halls have curtains, okay? So you probably have seen them. That's just some of the things that you see, uh, but nowadays not all theatres are the same, okay? So, where can you perform? Yes, you can perform in a theatre, you can perform in the classic, traditional, like say your King's Theatre or um, 
all the big ones in Glasgow, the Citizens, things like that. You can also perform in a, a smaller theatre, which or a hall with a stage, like so there's lots of school halls. Um, if you've ever been to some of our other venues, like say Hamilton, um, it's a big hall, rows of seats and a stage in front of you. Um, or the Village Theatre, it's more of a traditional theatre, it's got seats in, set out rows and the stages in front of you. But uh, you've also got other places like um, like here in East Coast Arts Centre, it's slightly different which I'll show you in a minute. And you can basically perform anywhere, okay? Anywhere you can squeeze an audience and an actor into it, you can perform. Uh, I've been doing drama for a number of years, so I've performed in many different locations. Um, some a bit odd, um, Berlin Prison being one of them. Um, so you can literally perform anywhere. I've had the privilege of performing at the Edinburgh Fringe as well. So I was an actor out doing a performance in the middle of the street. Okay, um, middle of Princess Street in Glasgow. Yeah, anywhere you can see it. I've seen it done in tents, I've seen it done in marquees. I've actually seen someone squeeze into a phone box. Okay, a live show with the actors in a phone box in a TARDIS, kind of looking like Doctor Who type thing. Uh, you can literally do theatre anywhere you can squeeze in an audience and an actor. Alright, so keep that in mind. It doesn't always need to be in a theatre, um, a traditional sense theatre. It can be anywhere. So, what we're going to do is stop quickly and I'm going to show you a bit more about stagecraft, okay? And as if by magic, I'm on a stage. I'm currently on the stage in the Art Centre in East Kilbride. And if I was uh, doing a show in this theatre, this is where I would be. If you were doing a show as part of your drama classes in the Art Centre, this is where you would be. So it seemed like the ideal place to show you a wee bit and tell you a bit about being on stage. Okay, so uh, as I said, the way you perform can be anywhere. In the Art Centre, it's not a raised stage, you're actually on the ground floor and the audience look down on you. Okay, so here we are. Now, if I was doing a show on here, I'd have rehearsed, I'd have known all my lines, I'd be ready to go, and I'd get plonked on stage and told to perform. Okay, so what's the first things that you need to be aware of when you come onto the stage? As, first of all, easy one. How do you get on it? How do you get onto stage? More importantly, how do you get off it? Okay, at the end. So, where are your entrances and exits? Always best to know where they are because it can be a difficult one. Often, when you're in a, a play or a show, the start and end of a scene lights go up and down. So, you may be trying to get on or off the stage in the dark. Okay, so it's best to know how you get on, how you get off. Also, in the art centre, we're surrounded by curtains. So, where can you come in? Come in at the side. You need to know where the curtain comes in, okay? Because you don't want to be fumbling about at the end, okay? Trying to get off stage. People can see you trying to get off, struggling to get off and having a good laugh at you. You don't want that. So that's the first thing you need to find out when you're on stage. How do you get on and how do you get off? Okay, so right now, you need to think about your positioning. You're coming on the stage, where are you going? Right now, I am presently right in the middle. Bang in the middle of the stage, so I am what's called centre stage, okay? Now, this is where it gets confusing because your left and my right are different right now, okay? So, we refer to stage left and stage right. So where you are, what your left is, is my right, okay? So, if I was going right, I would go this way. So this is what would be referred to as stage right, okay? May look like your left, but it's not because I'm facing you, okay? Confused? You will be. Okay, so you can also go stage left, which is over this way. Now, just to confuse things, at the moment I am centre stage left. Still in the middle, but I'm further over, okay? So I'll go back to centre stage. But, uh, you don't want me to be centre stage, I need to be further back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up stage, okay? Now, up stage is backwards. Alright, so now I'm up centre stage. Alright, if I wanted to be up stage right, I would simply walk over to this side. Staying far back, centre's over there, I'm up stage right. Now, if I wanted to be closer to my audience, back at centre stage, I would move down stage. Okay, so that's exactly that, I'm moving forwards. So I'm now down centre stage. Alright, I could be down stage right if I wanted to, or I could be down stage left. Just simply by moving over to this side. 
So it's always worth listening to your director and knowing where they want you to be positioned on stage, okay? Now remember they will refer to it, it's always good to refer to it when you're rehearsing from a stage point of view. When you rehearse what you'll often do for your play is, as you practice they'll lay out a stage similar to the one you're performing on so that they, you can practice what side is what. So it's always best to know where you're to be positioned on stage. Now, when you're there, what other things do you need to be aware of when you're on stage? Next one. Now, I'm six foot two, okay, six foot three, depending on how I've got high heels on or not. And I'm quite tall, so um, if you were on stage with me, uh, you wouldn't want me standing right in front of you, would you? No. So that's what's called masking, all right? So you always need to be aware of where other people are on stage next to you. Um, you don't want someone taller than you standing in front of you. Um, and you also don't want to be standing in front of someone so that they can't be seen. Right, so that is masking. That's something you need to be aware of. Not only can it be done by people, uh, it can be done by set, props, furniture, things like that. Always make sure you can be seen by uh, the audience, okay? And that also means people pay lots of money to see you on stage. They want to see this part of you, they want to see your face, okay? Now I'm sure you all have lovely backs of heads, but that's not why people bought the ticket, okay? So always make sure, regardless of where you are on stage, that your face is to the front, okay? So if you're walking across stage, make sure you're walking with your face out. Don't come on stage and pretend you're talking to someone and stand with your back to the audience. Again, lovely back, head, but that's not why they bought the ticket, okay? So make sure you've always got your face to the audience, regardless of where you're standing, uh, and you've not got your back to it, okay? Now always make sure you can be seen. Again, so that means uh, if you're positioning yourself, but you don't want to be face on, if you're side on, make sure your face is still to the front. Let's just use this chair slightly, okay? If I was uh, sitting on stage, I could be sitting like this, so I could be sitting right in front of you. Like so. But uh, if there were a number of us, and we were all sitting together, would you have someone sitting like this? No, you wouldn't, because people wouldn't be able to see that person. What you then need to do is think about positioning on the angle, okay? So, one of us could be sitting like this, sign on, still able to speak out to the audience, not got my back to the audience, but it makes me think I'm sitting with the rest of the people, okay? So we can have one here, one here, and one here. Okay, so we have the three of us, no one has their back to the audience, but it's quite clear we're all sitting together, we can all speak clearly and be heard and seen. Okay? So that's another important one. What else do we need to know when we're on stage? We talked about it before, volume. Okay? Now, um, I'm currently down here and the camera's up there. So I need to speak loudly so that the camera picks me up, okay? If there was an audience member up the back there, they need to hear what I'm saying as well. So there's no point in me standing here speaking like this, where this lady down here can hear me, but the people up the back can't, okay? So you need to think of your volume. The studio theatre is not that big, it only seats 96 people, okay? So compared to other theatres, it's not massive. So you very often find you don't need to use microphones in the studio theatre because everyone can hear you if you speak loudly. Whereas if I was in a much bigger theatre, I might have a microphone. There might be rifle mics on the stage or on the floor to help the volume. So you need to be in control of that when you're on stage. There's no point learning your lines if no one hears them, okay? So, you need to think of your volume. We talked earlier when we were doing our vocal warm-ups and stuff about being able to whisper but still be heard. It's called a stage whisper, right? Remember? Not the real whisper. All right, so, you need to think of your volume. Okay, what else do we need to think about when we're on stage? We're now doing a performance, okay? Now being on stage can be really, really nerve-wracking, okay? I've been doing this for 20 <coughs> years, and I still get nervous being on stage. It's just perfectly natural. So, things go wrong, that's fine. When you're on stage and you're doing your performance, something could go wrong. Something could forget a line. 
you could fall over, the set could crash down around you, it doesn't matter, you just need to keep going. Stay in character, the full time you're on stage. I know it can be quite hard to begin with, you might think, oh it's really really exciting, or I've not got a line here so no one will be looking at me. Trust me, even though you've not got lines, your mummy will still be in the audience and she'll be watching you the full time, okay? As will someone else. So if you slip out a character, they'll see it, okay? There's no point standing at the back having a wee chat with your pal if you're supposed to be watching what's going on down here. Stay in character, get in the mode. As soon as you come on that stage, you are someone else, okay? So you need to stay in the character the full time, okay? Now, a good way to think about it and get over the nerves is see this audience out here, ignore them, okay? There's a thing that's called the fourth wall, which we use in drama. Okay, so we've got one wall, two walls, three walls, four walls, okay? If you don't need to interact with the audience, they're not there, okay? There's a big wall, runs along there, this is your room, okay? Forget about them. Block them out. So, there will be instances in your shows or in performances where you may need to interact with the audience. Think of a pantomime, the theme, she has lots of interaction with the audience, so she needs to be aware of them. If you don't need involvement with the audience, block them out, okay? You don't need to be there. They'll still see you, and it helps you stay in character, gets over the nerves, okay? I know the first time you're out there, it'll be exciting to see people you know. Try and ignore them. Now, there's a lot of times I used to do it as a kid when I was in the shows. I used to go, oh, there's my mum. And I'd stand and start waving to her on stage. Meanwhile, everyone would be laughing at me and my mum would be hiding under her seat going, I don't know him. So, it's lovely to see people you know come and see your show, but tell them at the end, afterwards, how great it was to see them, okay? When they're on, when you're on the stage and they're in the audience, forget about them, okay? Stay in character the full time. Don't laugh unless you're supposed to laugh, okay? Sometimes funny things happen on stage. Some characters say really funny lines or they do something really funny and your character in the play may be required to laugh. That's great. See if you're not, you need to watch your own laugh. Sometimes it's nerves as well. Sometimes when you forget your line or you stumble your lines, you just go <laughs> uh, and you laugh. Try not to laugh on stage if you don't have to. If it's not part of the script, don't do it. So we're doing our performance, what else do we need to remember? Stick to the plan, alright? Before you come onto stage to perform to someone, you've been practicing, you've been learning your lines, you may have wrote your lines depending if it's an improvisation or a scripted piece. You've practiced with your colleagues and your peers on stage. They are coming on the same as you, they've learned their lines, they've practiced away. Stick to what you've been doing. In your classes I'll have spent weeks with you practicing, okay? Giving you hints and tips of where to stand, when to say, what you have to say, how to say it, and we've gone through it over and over and over again. Some people get on stage and they get a bit carried away and they go, I'll just change it and do what I want. That doesn't work. What can happen is it can throw the person opposite you. They go, they didn't do that in rehearsals. Stop, they didn't do that. They're supposed to do this and the whole thing can fall apart. Keep it as practice. If as we're going through the practice process, if you have an idea or a thought that you think something might work better, speak to people beforehand and agree it with either the director, myself, or the other people on stage with you, okay? Don't just go off and do your own things, stick to the plan. So, things that we've covered there, entrances and exits. Positioning, there's all points on the stage. Masking, don't stand with your back to the audience, don't laugh, remember your lines, don't interact with the audience if you don't have to, and keep going, okay? So, just like that, I will click my fingers and I'll be back off the stage. Okay, uh, back in the room then, okay, so that was things that we can do when we're on stage, um, but how else? Um, can we enhance our performance, okay? So, you're performing to people, they're all things that you need to remember. Now, what will happen in the theatre is the technicians will make you look good with lighting, there'll be lovely sets, there'll be lovely um, 
furniture on stage as well for you. What else can we use to enhance your performance, okay? First thing that we can use is costumes. Now, costumes, what are they? They're outfits for the performers, okay? What can we use them for? Now, costumes can be used for a number of things. They can help set the context of the piece that you're performing, okay? So they can help us work out when it was set, okay? So if it was a medieval thing, we'd be wearing more medieval clothing and it would give us that impression, okay? It can also help us work out um, what kind of other things it involved, where it's set. Um, we could be wearing costumes that are related to the country that it was set in or the period that it was set in, okay? So, what it can do is it can enhance the appearance of the show, okay? Now, there are pros and cons of costumes. I must caveat that, okay? Pros, they make you look good, they make the show look good, they make the whole thing gel and blend together, okay? But there is some problems, especially for actors. It's an added pressure, okay? You have the responsibility of knowing what costume you have to have on at what time, okay? That's up to you, it's not up to anyone else. I've done it myself many a time in the show, I've walked on the stage and I've been wearing completely the wrong outfit for the scene and stood out like a sore thumb. So, it's an added pressure, a lot of people don't like it, okay? Um, also, some of the costumes can be a bit odd, alright? Um, you don't want to spend the whole time when you're on stage trying to fix something, maybe you've got a hat that doesn't sit right so you spend the whole time trying to put it back on. Uh, maybe the costume's not comfortable, it restricts your movement. Maybe if you're the, the panto donkey, um, you're wearing a whole donkey costume on stage, you have added pressures. Um, sometimes it can even be down to if you have to wear particular footwear as part of your costumes, you have to walk in it slightly differently, it's a bit risky, you might fall over, all these types of things, okay? So there is a lot of cons to costumes. If you're doing a show with myself, um, in my drama classes, I would like to make sure all my children have uh, black on, okay? So all black, trousers, um, shirts, shoes, where possible. And what I'll do is I'll introduce small aspects of costume, okay? Whether it's a hat, a waistcoat, something that gives the representation of where it's set and adds to the context, but it's not too much to worry about, okay? There's not that added pressure. I like to take that away from my actors, okay? So, the other thing that we can use in our performances is props, okay? What's a prop? It's an object that uh, enhances the performance. It's on stage, that gets used by the actors, but it's not a piece of scenery, a light, uh, an electrical item, or a musical instrument, okay? It's a prop, it's an additional thing on stage used by actors to perform the show, okay? Now you can get general props or personal props. General props are something that's on the stage, that is constantly on the stage, that someone will place for a scene as they're setting the scene up. A personal prop is something that is specifically handed to the actor that they use on stage. And again, that is their responsibility. It's an added responsibility. Um, to the performers that they have the prop, they know when to use it and they know where it is when it's not in use. Um, usually there's prop tables, there's things like that that you make sure you know where it is. It's your responsibility. If you go in without it, no one else is going to help you out. It's down to you. So again, you can make the show look better. You might find it can be something simple as, as a book, you could be going on and you were pretending you were out for dinner, so you might have some prop cutlery or there might be some cups or something like that. Props can be anything that enhances the scene, okay? Adds to where it's set and provides a bit more aspect to the audience. It's about making it look good, okay? So they're the two things that we can do to enhance further our performances, other than our staging, as props and costumes. Okay, so that's us. We're at the end of episode three. Uh, what have we learned today? We've learned about staging. We spent some time on the stage. We spent about uh, how we can enhance our performances through costumes and props. Um, what are the key things that we've learned today? Uh, when we're on stage, think about our volume, or um, how we're standing, where we're standing, our entrances and exits, how we deal with our audiences, all these types of things that we need to be aware of, okay? Next time we'll be moving on to thinking about actual drama workshops. For the second half of the block will be workshops related to drama where there'll be activities. You'll see a lot of the similar warm-up tasks we've done before and we're building towards the big quiz at the end of the six episodes, okay? 
So, as for today, I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you again soon. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.